Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Patty. Hello. Hi Christian, thanks for having me on. So for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? So my name is Paddy Byrne. It's a very Irish name, but um, I am from, well, grew up just close to Glasgow, and that's where I'm based just now as well. I am a lead functional consultant um, in Dynamics 365. I tend to have kind of pivoted between Dynamics 365 Power Platform the last few years, but um, I keep getting drawn back into the Dynamics side of things. My speciality is kind of customer service and sales, so those customer engagement applications. If you're not careful, they might just give you two MVPs or something. You know, there's more and more <laughs> dual MVPs because I think we're seeing that happen a lot more of people split between a couple of those areas, writing, doing a ton of activity. And yeah. there's that internal battle for folks that don't know, the Microsoft product teams, they're the ones who say, hey, we want this person. So if you've got two teams kind of vying for you, you could end up with surprise, hey, a second MVP. I did see that this year. There was a few um, in, in um, Europe. There was a few dual mm -hmm. um, awards. It's always good to see. Well, very cool. So so how, tell me about kind of your community involvement and story. Yeah, so I, I was always aware of the Microsoft MVP community. I, I suppose I got involved really early. Um, I kind of fell into the job working with CRM uh, version four in, two, in 2009. Mm -hmm. I was actually, I wanted to be a developer and I was working on a .NET support engineer role on the help desk and the help desk software we used was uh, Danix CRM 4 and I started messing about with it, customizing it and then my uh, company sold our implementation of CRM 2011 and uh, they didn't have anybody do it so I did it and they said you have all the training in the world but I didn't get any of the training in the world and so I reached out on LinkedIn and my first introduction to the MVP community was uh, Neil Benson. I just reached out for help and said, I need some help on this. And um, Neil got in touch. I mean, this has come back from 2009. So he kind of got in touch and, and helped me through things. So I was always aware there was an MVP community there. And I suppose early in my career, I kind of aspired to, to be an MVP. Mm -hmm. But um, things just, you know, it's just kind of toddled along really in my job and carried on working away did, doing it really for the money and then <laughs> not really for yeah. the, just well, all, all fully full of selfish reasons <laughs> well, well you know it's it, it's funny so, like look that goes without saying though i mean we're we're all kind of doing doing the stuff for for money i mean <laughs> I, I, i'm not aware of any mbps that are uh you know that like won the lottery and are you know <laughs> don't need to work and they're just doing it for the 100 percent you know, pleasure yeah. side of things, but, but it's, there's value that comes out of it, but it's definitely a different way of working. Absolutely. So, that, and that's really what happened then like, about six years ago, I started a family with my girlfriend and uh, we had a really tough time after the birth. My girlfriend had a, a kind of injury during the, the straight after the birth. And it was kind of a good three years of treading water. And my career goal over those three years was just remain employed. But over those, once those three years kind of ended, um, I got introduced to the community again. Like I said, I was always aware it was there, but never the extent of the, the, the size of the community, how, yeah. how large it was. And then I got introduced, uh, it was kind of three events happened, oh, actually maybe, maybe four, three events happened at the same time. My, a client of mine um, was moving to work to a Microsoft partner and I met this woman and she um, she was passionate. She reminded me of the passion I had when I started my job. And then I kind of realized that what, what really happened, I've just been treading water and, you know, plodding along in this in this career. I used to be really passionate. And so that kind of got me thinking. And so then Dynamics 365 Glasgow happened in 2019, I want to say 2019, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I went along to that and then realized there was, I realized the, the extent of the community and there was all these people you know, doing what they, they loved. Um, and I actually did love this work. <laughs> I, wasn't, you know, I was just being kind of like, um, I said, treading water, remaining employed for, for so many years. And then uh, I kind of made the decision then that, because uh, I wasn't doing anything else because of the family and difficult circumstances, I wasn't going to do anything else. So I thought, I'm going to kind of make this a lifestyle choice. Yeah. Um, and so I just started 
uh, and again um, from meeting um, my client, they uh, it could give me a bit of a, a, a fear of death because <laughs> a good fear because the technology had moved on so much because I wasn't doing any active studying or anything like that. And yeah. um, uh, and the power platform was just becoming to to gain traction. Um, so I uh, started studying canvas apps and I really wanted to make YouTube videos, but really just to make YouTube videos, not to, not to like share um, knowledge or anything. But I thought I'll, I'll, I'll learn canvas apps and I'll, I'll do some YouTube videos on it. I started that and then I looked at the um, the kind of the, the session list of the Scottish so the D365 Glasgow that I attended. I just followed everyone on Twitter and um, just started engaging with them that way and engaging with the community. And like I said, it became a lifestyle then. Yeah. Um, my YouTube videos gained a lot of traction. I was introduced to uh, Mark Smith, the D3. Yeah, uh, down in New Zealand. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he run a mentoring program that I got mm -hmm. involved in, 90 Day Mentoring Challenge. And um, and that kind of, again, like I said, I, I, was, I was using the YouTube channel, that kind of kicked it off. And then I got nominated as an MVP, but I had very little content or anything. I was just, you know, doing my thing and learning. I kind of adopted this kind of, you know, learn, share kind of lifestyle in my spare time. Mm -hmm. um, but that kind of gave me a bit of a fright because <laughs> I'd get really stressed about it and it kind of lost its fun because then it was like for, for, for a few months I was like, wow, I've been nominated. I need to do all this extra work. And I kind of almost started to take holidays to make YouTube videos and things like that. And that was completely the wrong way well, there, to do it. The <laughs> there is some some degree of, and when I when I've you know, mentored people, I say this, it's, it's about like developing healthy habits. You have to enjoy it. You have to find your thing. Yeah. Like I, I love making videos. I, I do a, a, a ton of video creation, but the quality of the production value, like I don't have the patience or the time to go make them as beautiful as other people have figured that, that out. I would love mm. for, to get some help in doing that, but I continue to do just the more simplistic and put them out there um, because I enjoy it. I've, so I like, that's something that you need to people that are interested in and potentially become an MVP need to think about do is like what what do I enjoy doing whether it's writing or or answering questions on forums or creating videos or what, mm -hmm. whatever it is um figuring that out but then just making time for it that's probably the hardest yeah. thing absolutely enjoying it's the, the, the biggest part of it and from for, when I got nominated the three months following that I, I wasn't doing it for the love of it again. I was doing it because I felt I had to get this. So mm. I almost seen it as a as an accreditation or a certification, which it's not. And it was I haven't chatted with someone else that, that I know in the community. And they kind of they kind of made me think of it. Says it's not a you know it's not a certification, it's an award for the work that you're doing. And right. that kind of it just kind of woke me up. And then I kind of decided that you know, I don't need to do all this extra work. It's, I'm not this is becoming a chore. So I, I stepped back um and you know my nomination is still active, um, but I just kind of left it and dropped, dropped. Uh, not didn't drop it. I just did things when I when I wanted to do things and when I enjoyed doing them. Yeah. And then I was I wanted to give back. So I remember right back to my kind of start of my my career and Neil helping me out. And I was thinking, what what how how have people helped me out and the, the MVP community helped me out or the Microsoft community helped me out, and they really helped me out during that 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 good few years when I was struggling and. Um, and so I, I thought I can help people who are struggling to get to events and like struggling to learn Power Platform because I had to just learn on, on my own, sitting in, my, in the room I'm sitting in now, um, watching YouTube videos, learning all this stuff. And I thought it'd be easier if someone could offer night classes or training courses on this. And I thought that's maybe what I could do to, to, to pay it forward, as I promised Mark Smith mm -hmm. that I would do. Um, and so I, I, I ran the, I, the idea past Mark and I did a podcast with him. Um, and that's, I spoke about this, I'd really want to start some sort of, you know, night, virtual night class after hours for say single parents or people who just can't get to events or whose work won't pay for them to get to events. And there was a group of people based in Scotland, <laughs> interestingly, who were, who, who were listening to the podcast and who invited me to, they were, they were starting up a user group. And so they invited me along called the Virtual Power Group Scotland. Mm -hmm. Uh, they invited me along and they said, if you want to do the night classes, there's a stage really for you to do the night classes on. And they just, they just gave me a, a license to the Teams event. This was uh, before the pandemic hit, um, just a couple of months before the pandemic hit. Um, 
and so I started doing these kind of power platform night classes and the, the selfish, re selfish reason for doing them was that I wanted to improve my training and my presentation skills so I picked something that I knew for beginners and uh, so I didn't need to learn any new technology or anything I mm -hmm. just trained people um, and and then unselfishly the whole thing was to give give back and help people that were in my position a few years previously who couldn't and um, didn't have time due to personal circumstances to, to study so I thought I'd do that and then of course um, COVID came and our virtual user <laughs> also and everything was virtual and it yeah. went from kind of you know eight members to 400 members <laughs> Yeah. So within a few months, and um, I got more and more involved in the, the admin of that. So I wasn't just running, I wasn't just running night classes. I was running, um, organising and hosting other sessions and booking virtual speakers and everything that came along with that. And and we're you know we're, we're you know, two years in now, and it's uh it's it's still going just now. We're, we're kind of it's, we've lost a bit of traction at the moment yeah. because of up, but I just yeah. I just thought just had a thought too. It's kind of like you did talk about you know pandemic babies, you know, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. uh, and that we we got like some some folks that are like pandemic MVPs because you just renewed for the first time, right? This so you you're a two time or is yes, yeah, so I'm two. I am two time now, so this is okay. my second one. That's my first renewal. Right. So so within that cycle. Because I've had a couple conversations with a couple newer MVPs that are a little uh, freaked out about now the in-person events starting up again and doing some other things mm. beyond pure virtual, uh, and and so I it, it'll be interesting to see you know talking with you and and others yeah. about how, how that changes and and uh, I mean especially with a lot of the anyway that was just a, a thought about. Uh, pandemic babies just want to bring that up but the yeah. uh but so what is going to what you know change around the what, how do you see the the user group evolving and stuff are you seeing less participation in online or well it's it's we're still seeing the same but not as quite as same the same traction as we get but um i when i was speaking to my this my cpm about the mvp award one of the things mm -hmm. I, I i kind of you know held back a little bit before even taking it further because like I said, the, the the pandemic was coming to an end. Things were starting to open up. I didn't want to try and keep this going. I didn't want to get the award in for it just to you know to to, to fill up to die out. Um, so we kept it going for a wee while. We just kept doing events, and we were still getting really we still got really good attendances. Um, right up until uh, recently, I mean, well, we get about kind of 20, 25 people at each virtual event, which is which is quite pretty good. The, the, mo the most we got, I think, was fifty nine at one of them. Um, so almost double that at a kind of virtual one hour night class. <laughs> it was a bit daunting trying to control 59 students. Really. Um, and we still get about 25 people attending the event. So it's still it's still going, it's still popular. We've got a, mm -hmm. a, a big um, audience. Um, for, for me though, I mean, I, obviously I got my MVP last September. Um, I don't know, this is, I, when I first got the MVP, I was a bit like a rabbit in the headlights, so I didn't really know what to do. I, I just decided to just kind of shut off a lot of social media, and that's why I didn't get back to you so quickly. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to go go mad, just just take it easy, continue just doing what I'm doing with the, the user group, yep. um, and see where, it, see where it takes me. And also, for me, I wanted to find out um, how I can best serve the community as well, now that I am an MVP, so I looked at some of the other some of the options that you get through from being an MVP, like I started doing a lot, some work with the Imagine Cup judging and things like yep. that. And just the these, these things that I was, yeah. the things that I was never really into before, but now I've got the opportunity to, to get involved a bit and try and so, find Since you mentioned where, that, you, you should probably describe what that is for folks too, the Imagine Cup. Yeah, so the Imagine Cup, I, so we've done the Imagine Cup and the Imagine Cup Junior um, was I, I was involved with. Imagine Cup is a, um, uh, a kind of, it's a competition for students to, to to innovate through technology. That's probably the best way of describing it. They, they come up with like Microsoft technology specifically. Right. <laughs> it has to be a mention of Azure in it. Um, so they, they come up with a, a, a concept and they, they, they build that, that kind of concept using Microsoft technologies. Um, There's the, a lot the of words and one... recognitions out of that. And I, I, I'm not mm. sure if, if some of those, if we've even found some new MVPs out of that program, but... Uh, It'd be interesting to go and do the history. But mm. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. You. The, 
Yeah. No, the, the last one I did was um, the junior one. So I think if I'm right, it's the the age group is 13 to 17, and mm-hmm. so they were their their project this year was using AI for good. And so you've got um, uh, these you know, kids, teenagers, um, who are, some of them it's their first exposure to AI, and Microsoft can tool, give them tools and lessons on how to you know how to utilize some of the AI within the Microsoft Cloud, and it's really just to to for innovation just to see what ideas come out of them and some of the 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 concepts that come out of it is fantastic and like i said i've been doing some of the judging and and it's just mind-blowing and so i i've been doing over the last six months i've been a bit more of that and finding out so i've not been doing as much of the user group stuff or the night classes but just trying to find out other things and see other opportunities and see where i fit in and and i think now that uh, i've just been renewed for a second time I'm going to try and explore a wee bit more of that as well. So I don't think I'll just be doing the user group. And the user group will still be there and I'll still use that as a as a platform for whatever kind of new projects I, I come up with. Um, but I, uh, I haven't quite decided. I'm going to do a bit of a rebrand as well just now. I'm going to try and re- change, change things about a bit because I've catered for um, the, the kind of entry to Power Platform audience. Mm-hmm. I think now I want to just mix things up a wee bit. And keep it a bit more interesting and maybe look at for me my career just now i'm a lead functional consultant like a high-end lead so i'm moving into that solutions architecture uh, architect role in that kind of space so i might do something around learning how to to do that and i'm not sure if, i'm not quite chosen what the the right medium for that is and um, or the right channel whether it's a user group uh, you know live sessions or youtube podcasts or even a big mixture of them all but that's the kind of space i'm, I'm looking to get into um, Another thing I'm heavily involved in, I, well, I got involved with the Scottish Summit New Speakers channel. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's part of my goal uh, of presenting and doing the, the, the training was to, to speak at events. Of course, they were all virtual <laughs> because of the pandemic. But um, we got invited by Mark Christie and Conley to run a New Speakers Enablement Programme for last year's Virtual Summit and this year's In-Person Summit. And that was hugely successful. Um, and so I've been invited to run the South Coast Summit New Speakers and Event Program as well this year. So, Very cool. Uh, well, I have to ask you, <laughs> so, for some of the events that I've helped organize, and we made a concerted effort to do the same thing to find new speakers. And and we, you know, occasionally like we would, uh, you know, for doing like SharePoint Saturday events and other community driven events, um, we would reach out to uh, to the local universities and community colleges and in kind of broad invitation out to anybody to come and participate and get the free training and you know kind of all those all those things but it's always a struggle to find people that haven't ever presented mm-hmm. that are so freaked out by that prospect of being up in front of a group of people and presenting on something and all of the concerns that they have of like well I'm not an expert it's like well none of us are an expert on all things like we have depth of knowledge in certain areas, but teach what you know. And yeah. it, it will be remedial for some people and others, they'll think this is like somebody just in created fire. Like it, it'll be brand yeah. new to them. So what what made your the, your your program successful? How did you find people? Well, it's the first thing we did. I, and I think because I was quite, I was known in the virtual space and the, the Scottish Summit this year was an in-person event. Um, in June. It was meant to be February, but it was, it was right. June. And so the, the, the guidelines for new speakers was that you hadn't spoken at an in-person event. So you could have spoken at a virtual event. And of course, a lot of people were doing that for the first time over the pandemic. And because yep. I was prominent within the virtual space, the, there was a lot of people who had grown their confidence over that over those few years and were ready to take that next step into speaking at, uh, at an in-person event. So we did a uh, the way we started off is we just did an interest form. So it wasn't like a call for speakers or anything. We just did a general interest in the new speaker enablement program. We set up those, made it, made it clear that it was a first time speaking at an in-person event. And we got, um, I don't remember the exact number, but we got a lot of interest from, from that to be involved in the program. Some already had spoken, but we still let them be part of the program because we're not going mm-hmm. to exclude anybody. They just couldn't be right. on the new speaker's track. But we almost got too, we got too many new speakers. And so I ran a session and I showed, explained what being a speaker was. 
and we explained, and sh just showed them how to register on Sessionize, because I think that's quite daunting as well. For me, anyway, when I first submitted a session, and um, just taking that leap of filling in Sessionize, learning how to log in, setting your profile up, those just <laughs> are excuses. Aren't they? You can procrastinate, oh, I'll do that profile bit tomorrow. So we run a session just to say, this is how you register and encourage people to do that. And then that, I think we had, you know, we went from kind of like four submissions to 52 submissions <laughs> over the last yeah. week. Obviously the deadline, the, the, the call for papers uh, expiring helped as well. But uh, we, we, we'd so many that we had to cut down the, the sessions to 20 minute sessions as opposed to 50 yeah. minute sessions to give everybody a chance really to, right. to speak. Which is a great length to do a 15, 20 minute presentation if you're brand new to doing that in person to do like a TED talk, a lightning talk type length. I mean, that that's a fantastic introduction to your first time. Mm -hmm. It's not long. So it's enough for you to have solid content, answer a couple of questions that they come up, but feel confident in your, your content mm -hmm. versus fill up 45 to, to 60 minutes of content. Um, that's a lot for a first timer. That is absolutely. Absolutely, but yeah, it could be. I mean, it was, it was going to be successful, but maybe not that successful. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, are you doing anything with? So you had all those entries. Are, have you? Did you reach back out to those people that didn't get selected for it? Are you doing anything with those people that content? And um, we we made sure that most people got got the opportunity to speak. So it was a two day event. So we had two days of full full twenty minute sessions. There was there was two hour long ones we did, or fifty minute long ones that we did. Um, we haven't reached out to them yet. Um, I have, uh, I'm thinking about reaching out to them to do some virtual power group nights and maybe speak at the user groups. Right. Um, we haven't taken any action on that yet. And um, we're still making plans for what we're doing with that going forward. But um, it's just getting the time really, isn't it? <laughs> it, uh, it always is. I mean, that, that's- As soon as one stops, another one starts. It's just not an opportunity to start. But I mean, it, it's always, I always hate to turn away, you know, good content like that, yeah. you know, finding a format, it, even, even putting together or maybe hosting, I don't know, just throwing an idea out there, like hosting, if those people go and pre-record and having, uh, you know, videos mm -hmm. of uh, each of the topics, and you could even add that into the extended catalog of content for the event, yeah. um, the, those sessions that are, you know, digital only or, or, or mm -hmm. something, but just a way of making sure everybody's recognized. Obviously it needs to clear a couple hurdles, be appropriate content, those kinds of things. But, yeah, absolutely. You know, well, well, Patty, I, I know we're, we're into time here, but uh, you know, for folks that want to find out more about you, get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Uh, best way on, is on LinkedIn. I'm Paddy Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E on LinkedIn, should you be able to find me. Or if you do the LinkedIn URL forward slash Freestyle Dynamics. I said I went to a rebrand recently. So it used to be Free Fall 365, and it's Freestyle Dynamics. But you also get me uh, on Twitter, Paddy Freestyle, so at Paddy Freestyle. And my website is www.freestyledynamics.com. You'll still get me on Free Fall 365 because that's my previous brand. But I'm just because I'm changing the content up a bit, I'm yep. going to start fresh and, and change things up. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. And of course, uh, I think you're, it sounds like you're a fantastic resource for anybody that's brand new that is kind of fear yeah. of like, how do I get started? Patty is a great person to reach out to and connect with to, uh, to, to kind of find your path. If this is becoming an MVP is something that you have a goal towards. And, uh, you know, there, of course, I say this with every MVP that I interview is like, never be afraid to reach out and connect with the MVPs. Mm -hmm. We are very friendly people, which is why we're MVPs. So if you find somebody, you really like their content, you really like, you know, they, their personality, reach out to them and say, Hey, are you interested in being a mentor? Or can you give me advice or, or what have you? And I think most of us are willing to do all of the above. So yeah, reach out. Absolutely. The thing I will say is that, you know, um, the best thing about the community is that you can reach out to any of the MVPs or anybody within the community and you can get non-judgmental assistance. Yeah. And just about anything, whether it's tech-related or not tech-related, you can reach out to us and you'll get non-judgmental help. So exactly. Please touch. Yep. Excellent. Well, Patty, hey, it was great connecting with you and uh, I hope to see you at the very latest next summer when I'm over in your neighborhood. Yes. So. Get in touch. Yes. I will. Me up. I'll reach out. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Christian. Bye. Wow.